everyone, welcome to Greybeard's Jewels. Today we have some exciting news. We recently launched our new podcast, Greybeard's Jewels, A Step Into the Unknown. Narrated by none other than Greybeard himself. We plan on having lots of scary stories, urban legends, mythologies, and all kinds of other topics. And we'll feature an occasional special guest, too. Be sure to check us out wherever you get your podcasts, or see the description below for a link. And now, without any further ado, here are 10 fun facts about Oregon. Number 1. The Columbia River Gorge is a canyon along the Columbia River and forms a portion of the Washington-Oregon border. Not only is it a beautiful location showcasing scenic views, breathtaking falls, and some wild and crazy rapids, but it's also considered one of the best windsurfing and kiteboarding locations in the world. There are options for all skill levels along the gorge. Just starting out? The Hook in Hood River, a sheltered cove, is a great spot. Well experienced or advanced? Check out Rooster Rock in Corbett, where winds sometimes reach up to 80 miles per hour. Number 2. Tillamook Rock Light, known locally as Terrible Tilly, is a deactivated lighthouse which sits on less than an acre of basalt rock, located a little over a mile offshore from Tillamook Head. Since 1980, under private ownership, and after reinforcement and restoration, the former lighthouse has functioned as Eternity at Sea Columbarium, the final resting place of 30 funerary urns. The columbarium operates much like a traditional cemetery, with the exception being it can only be accessed by helicopter due to the hazardous conditions, and not at all during the nesting season of endangered and protected seabirds. Number 3. Yurts originated in Central Asia and were used as shelter by nomadic cultures, and Oregon was the first state to introduce them as an option for campers in their state parks. Yurts are cylindrical dome structures with wooden frames that support canvas walls, and while offering amenities such as simple beds, heat, light, and electricity, they still offer guests a rustic experience and better protection from the elements than traditional tenting. There are even some deluxe models that boast private baths and kitchenettes. As of 2019, 32 parks in the system have nearly 200 yurts available to guests as a year-round camping rental. Before we go any further, just a quick reminder to like and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you won't miss a thing. Thank you for your support. Number 4. In Salem, perched atop the state capitol, you will see the 22-foot-tall Oregon Pioneer statue, known locally as the Gold Man. The statue was created by sculptor Ulrich Ellerhusen as a tribute to symbolize the hardy settler who journeyed to Oregon from far away to make a home for himself in this beautiful land. The eight-and-a-half-ton bronze sculpture with gold leaf finish was completed in New Jersey and shipped to Oregon to be installed on a marble pedestal situated atop the newly finished capital in 1938, which was built to replace the previous versions which had burnt down. Number 5. At the Albany Historic Carousel and Museum, over 400 volunteers have donated nearly 50,000 hours of their time to a very unique revitalization project. Together with experienced leaders, volunteers of any skill level, even beginners, have been involved in creating the world's finest carousel. From hand carving and painting the whimsical menagerie of animals to helping restore the 1909 Denzel Carousel Corporation mechanism, which was donated by a descendant of the founder. Volunteers can also choose to act as a docent for the museum or associate at the gift shop, not to mention help staff carnivals and other events that together draw over 160,000 visitors annually. Number 6. The beaver, North America's largest rodent, has been Oregon's official state animal since 1969. Beavers were such a large part of the state's early economy that they not only earned a spot on the reverse of the flag, but inspired the state's nickname as well. Early settlers to the beaver state trapped the animal for its meat as well as its fur, which came into high demand as beaver pelt hats were quite fashionable in the day. Unfortunately, this led to overhunting. 
but the state stepped in and put a management program in place, ensuring the beaver would remain a part of Oregon's diverse wildlife. Number 7. Powell's City of Books in Portland is the world's largest used in new bookstore. Since the store first opened on a corner in 1971, it has now grown to encompass an entire city block that houses over a million books. The giant bookstore features nine color-coded rooms and over 3,500 sections. So, regardless of your preferred genre, you're sure to find what you're looking for inside. A brilliant and unique feature is the Rare Book Room, which draws book lovers from near and far to browse their collection of rare and collectible books, including first editions and autograph copies. Number 8. Crater Lake in South Central Oregon is the deepest lake in the United States and among the deepest in the world, at 1,949 feet deep. The deep blue clear waters of the lake are the main attraction of Crater Lake National Park, which encompasses the caldera of Mount Mazama, which formed when the volcano collapsed almost 8,000 years ago. The lake, filled entirely by precipitation and snowmelt, contains Wizard Island, a volcanic cinder cone topped with its own small crater dubbed the Witch's Cauldron, and a rock pillar island named Phantom Ship, as it resembles a ghost ship especially in foggy or dimly lit conditions. Number 9. The Willamette Meteorite was discovered in Willamette Valley near West Lynn long ago. As there was no impact crater at the site, it's believed the meteorite landed on an ice cap in either Montana or western Canada and was dragged to its resting place by glaciers and flooding. The meteorite is composed of 91% iron, 7.62% nickel, and contains traces of cobalt and phosphorus and other elements scarcely appearing in the Earth's crust, such as iridium. Amazingly, the approximately 10-foot by 6.5-foot meteor weighs over 15 tons. You can check it out for yourself at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Number 10. The Seaside Aquarium is one of the oldest aquariums on the West Coast and was the first in the world to successfully breed harbor seals in captivity. The privately owned aquarium opened in 1937 in a building formerly used as a saltwater bathhouse and swimming pool. In addition to the regular aquarium attractions, there is an area where you can feed the 11 seals, all bred at the facility, and watch them clown around for the guests. On average, seals in the wild live around 15 years, and in captivity, 20 years. But one seal, named Clara, lived 35 years. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Greybeard's Jewels. And don't forget to check out the podcast, too. Bye!